Let's go, let's go, $99 running shoe in the studio. Does anybody remember the last time I did a review in the studio for a shoe, obviously, under $100, okay? Let, I, I'm, I was trying to reflect back. It must have been late, 20, and oh yeah, by the way, this shoe is a new shoe. It's not a 2020 iteration or a 2019 even. It's a 2021 iteration, and it is not the Hoka Elevon 2. Here we go. Thank you, Hoka, for sending this shoe gold colorway, but here is the deal. Uh, I already tested this shoe. Didn't even realize it. Hoka Elevon 2, brand new, in a gold colorway. Gotta love that colorway. So, um, it's a size, yes, my size, seven, let me just confirm, actually. Yes, size seven and a half US. First person to tag me on Instagram in a story, okay? And then you have to use, you gotta do a little work here. You gotta use a dancing butter emoji in the tag, all right? First per person to do that. So hopefully early bird, hopefully you're waking up early for this. And then you have to take a picture of your shoe proving that you wear size seven and a half US, not UK, not EU, US. And then I'll ship these to any, whoever does it first, okay? You don't have to be in the US, global, all right? There you go. Let's dive in, 10 millimeter drop for the Brooks Launch GTS-8. There it is, Brooks Launch GTS-8. That is today's $99 stability running shoe. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. We're looking at 26 in the heel, 16 in the forefoot for more of that lower, uh, lower stack height for the Launch GTS-8. We're looking at 8.8 .8 ounces in women's size eight and in my size. By the way, I'm still looking for a location to uh, have this scale out here in the studio, but I'm gonna put it there for now. Looking at 8.3 ounces in my size. Where's the other one? Hold on, where'd it go? Oh boy. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> yeah, it's right. The other one's right there. So hey, there's my score on your screen. Solid score for the weight. Awesome. Like that's, okay, that's good for a neutral shoe, but stability shoes are always gonna weigh a little bit more because of the uh, extra components that the designers or engineers have to put into the midsole and the outsole and the upper to a certain extent in order to create that, usually on the medial side, the inside of the shoe to help with that over pronating, uh, just add some extra material to help with your foot strike. We're looking at an air mesh upper, okay, with very high breathability through the toe box. Noticed it immediately. Um, we're looking at standard score for the lockdown. Nothing to write home about. You know what's interesting is through the eyelet chain and the toe box and the vamp, the vamp is right here on the side of the toe box. Uh, simplicity, that's what's coming to mind. They didn't overthink it, that is for sure. And uh, oh yes, semi-gusseted tongue, okay. But I gotta say, good work, uh, Brooks, on this heel counter. Fairly stout, okay? So I felt no slipping through that heel pocket, but I, I personally, and New Balance, Nike, Hoka, everybody's doing it. Now Brooks, actually, I think this might be the first Brooks shoe where they're really doing this heel flare, or what's called, also known as the elf heel, where it just kind of flares out here in the back. I personally, I like it, okay? I think it adds a little bit of extra comfort on your Achilles tendon. If you have a, a tender Achilles tendon, uh, look for a shoe that has this flare here in the back just to add a little bit of support, but also um, if it's done right, it has some nice added cushioning in there just to help, again, keep your heel locked into that pocket. Overall, not a plush upper. I'll get you the uh, comfort score here in a minute. On to that midsole. I don't know what they're doing. They're calling it the Bio Mogo DNA midsole. What? Oh, I'm not. Bio. Who? <laughs> who has heard of the Bio Mogo DNA midsole? I have no clue. This is my first time researching and learning about the Bio Mogo. There it is on your screen. Bio Mo I'm just going to leave it there. I don't know what to tell you, but that's how they are spelling it on their website. So, Overall ride was fine. Um, it didn't feel like dead per se, but definitely didn't have any pep under the step, okay? It just kind of a standard midsole gets the job done. By the way, did I mention went 16 miles 
at six, about 650 a mile. So I wasn't just, you know, hanging out out there today. I, I did a pretty good run, but the midsole, um, I will, I'll say how I will use this shoe here in a minute. Uh, on to that overall score for the midsole, seven out of 10. On to the outsole, blown rubber with some basic flex grooves built into the toe box. I like that, um, but of course, just a little bit too much midsole, um, sorry, outsole rubber happening there. I think they could reduce it by quite a bit, but keep in mind it is a stability shoe. Usually stability shoes will have a little extra outsole rubber fit, true to size, no issues there. Comfort, six and a half out of 10. Again, nothing crazy to write home about. Um, I love the heel counter, but the upper is not plush by any means, but that helps keep the weight of the shoe down. Um, okay, we'll leave it there. Positive is the weight and the fact that it's a stability shoe, okay? To keep that under, basically, you know, under, definitely under nine ounces in my size is great for a stability shoe. Drawback, yes, outsole rubber. Durability prediction, ugh, going with 400 miles. I don't think, let's actually do it. Yeah, see, it's just, it's a pretty dense midsole. It's not giving too, too much. Let's do the other side. That was the medial. This is the lateral. Okay, maybe a little more give there. I wonder if they designed that in the actual production of the midsole. Anyway, I'm, go I'm gonna stick with 400 miles for the uh, durability prediction. Now, how will I use this shoe moving forward? Definitely a daily trainer, not an easy day shoe. I prefer a little more stack height for an easy day just to baby the legs. And I'm early in the training block right now. And so the need to baby my legs just isn't there. But because the weight, again, for a stability shoe, oh yeah, I also wanted to mention, um, I wouldn't use it for a long run either. I did 16 miles and by the end, my legs were feeling a little tired, okay? I could tell that this would not quite work out for me for a long run. It would just beat up my legs a little too much. But because the weight is not crazy high and yes, who is the shoe best for? Somebody that needs a little stability on the medial side of their foot, the inside of their foot, uh, but wants to pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, okay, is it under seven ounces? No. Is it under eight ounces? No. But um, again, you can't be uh, quite as, uh, I hate to say it, but quite as picky when it comes to a tempo day shoe if you need some stability through your foot strike. There's just not as many options out there on the marketplace. So this is actually a really lightweight shoe for stability. And it, okay, and this is not crazy high maximum uh, stability type shoe. This is on the lighter side with respect to stability. So there you go. That's who it is best for. Somebody that wants a little stability, wants to pick up the speed. Price point, 9.5 out of 10, $99. Good work, Brooks. That's gonna make a lot of people happy in 2021, okay? I mean, Man, I don't know. Like if I was in high school and didn't or didn't have a job or was looking for a job or in college and had to pay off student loans in a big, big way, I would really look at this guy. Um, it's not that, you know, it's not a soft ride like a ho like a lot of Hoka shoes or, you know, even some other New Balance shoes I've been testing lately, but it'll get the job done, especially if you're not running like 90 miles a week. If you're running that, you know, let's say 35 to 60 miles a week type of range. So, oh man, $99 is amazing. Other shoes to buy on your screen, Asics Gel DT, DS Trainer 25, Brooks Ravenna 11, and a couple others for you there. So, um, yeah, just really enjoying that. And just so you know, those other price points that you're looking at on your screen are, some of them are older iterations, so 2020 iterations okay shoe quick specs for you one more time there you go soak it in again that bio mogo dna midsole i don't know what's going on i don't know all right early scores 7.25 out of 10 i do believe we will get this shoe to 50 miles for that full review all right onward and upward um so interesting question of the day um not related to running shoes at all here we go if you could run with one runner who used to be a professional runner, but is now retired, who would you run with? And if you could only ask one question to that runner, what would you ask? Okay, that's the question of the day. So the runner has to be a former 
a professional or elite runner, any trail or road, doesn't matter. And then what question would you ask? Can't wait to read these answers down below. Thanks for hitting it up. Um, Boy, lots of running shoe reviews coming down the pike. All right, we'll toss it to uh, the Brooks Running Shoe Playlist. Brooks Running Shoe Playlist right there, right there. In case you want to dive deeper, lots of Brooks Running Shoes arriving in 2021. All right, everyone, see beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.